let's give some tips about ripping physical media into MKVs and troubles that you might encounter with regards to choosing the right playlist off your disc. So this one came in as a comment, as a question. I have a, a handful of videos available on the channel going into some pretty good and hopefully useful detail about how to convert physical media, Blu-rays, 4K Blu-rays, into MKV files that you might store on a server and play locally with the Zipedi, Infuse on an Apple TV, Plex on an Nvidia Shield. And one of the things that I didn't really talk a lot about in those videos that, that was the core of the question was how do you know or how do you get the right playlist? So when you open up a disc in Make MKV, sometimes it's real simple, right? The best case scenario, there's one playlist or one long playlist representing the, the actually main movie that you want to get. There's no confusion. There's no choices. There's no options. There's no way to kind of get the wrong thing. And you, you grab that one with your audio tracks and your subtitles and away you go and you're all set. But in, in a lot of cases, many cases, that's not actually the way it goes. And there's a couple different ways that playlist selection could be confusing. So let's go through a, a couple of the main ones. And I'm just going to kind of talk this one through rather than trying to dig out or find or get and show specifically with different movies or different discs that would take that would be a lot more in involved but i think when you open up a disc and you follow along with what i'm saying and you find these conditions they should map pretty clearly to understand what you're looking at versus what you may or may not need to do in terms of getting the right one for first off we might you might have a situation where you have multiple playlists that represent the same movie same running length all of that and in parentheses it might say angle one, angle two. And that's a pretty easy choice uh, in, in pretty much the, the 99 whatever percent of the cases. Just pick the angle one. A lot, of, a lot of times what that relates to is they might have mastered the disc that angle two is some kind of a special augmented playback mode. Maybe there's pop-ups that, that would be you know, visible on the screen giving context to something that's going on in the movie, like an enhanced watching mode or something like that. You don't really want that probably in your MKV anyway. And playing back, um, a, a lot of times that's that's built into the mastering of the disc as well. So forget all the multi-angle stuff. That was never, it, 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 it's inconsequential. Go for angle one, which will usually represent the base proper instance of the film. Another reason that you might see multiple playlists on an MKV is because that disc might actually contain different cuts of the movie. Some films have the, the theatrical edition in a director's cut or an extended cut. Movies like Close Encounters of the Third Kind has three cuts on it. There's a special, a theatrical, and a director's. I only ever tend to rip one uh, instance of a movie to my server. I don't keep multi-cuts, or generally speaking, I don't keep multi-cuts. You might want to do that, and you can. The thing that you want to look out for, basically, is if you if you know a movie has multiple cuts, and an easy way to find that out is to go to Blu-ray.com and look up the specific disc release of the one you're ripping, and it will tell you, you know, one movie, two cuts, and usually in the reviews, it, it, will, it will give you the information. I usually search around online, it is what I do, and say for a specific movie, What's the cut that's kind of generally accepted as the better one? Sometimes it's the theatrical, sometimes it's the director's. If it's a movie that I know really well, I might know specifically which cut of it I prefer in the one that I would want to have on my server. And, and generally speaking, you can tell the difference in the cuts just by looking at the runtime, right? Each cut of the movie has a defined, known, published runtime, and you can map to which one basically you want that way. Do keep in mind that sometimes different cuts of the movies though may have different audio tracks. I noticed this I think with some of the Fast and Furious movies that have a theatrical and like a, a minorly extended cut. In, in on the discs like the extended cuts don't have the lossless audio or they don't have the DTSX audio. So that is one thing to keep in mind when you're looking at different cuts of the movie. Even if you might prefer a cut of a movie it may have the substandard audio compared to another cut, and that might make a difference in terms of which one you actually want to keep on your server. But in terms of navigating the disc mastering and, and seeing multiple playlists, a, a movie having multiple cuts is a likely reason or a possible reason that there may be multiple instances there. 
Another case, it's pretty common, particularly for like Disney Fox, but other studios sometimes do this as well, is you may open up the disc and make MKV, and you might see two to four to five different playlists of the movie. They're all the same length, they all look the same, but the playlists are numbered starting from 800. So you'll see 800, 801, 802, 803. They're usually sequential, and again, they start at 800. Universally, in my experience, what I have found this represents is different variations of text in, in that may appear in the movie itself. So this is very common with Disney because at the beginning of Disney movies, you'll see Walt Disney Presents or Pixar Presents. Or the 800 playlist of the film is generally speaking the English variant of that. Pixar Presents. The 801 might be Pixar Presents in French. The 802 might be Pixar Presents in German different languages and, and and you can if you rip them separately and you look at them you'll see this pretty clearly and you'll notice too that the different components of the of the playlist itself swap different uh, specific video segments in in the beginning where there'll be a German segment a French segment an English segment I don't even bother anymore to actually manually inspect those I kind of go on faith based on a history of doing this that when I see multiple playlists with 800 numbering I just always take the 800 because um, I want the English version for myself. If you do want a different language, then you're going to have to do some work because beyond 800, it's not always consistent how many playlists there might be, whether it's French, German, or whatever other language might be there. But for the English, if you see the 800, just always take the 800. Another, another thing that I, I, you find, I would say a little bit more rarely, but you may notice on some discs that you have the same playlist or two of them, with the same running length, right? It's basically the same movie, and they're not 800 and 801. They may be completely different numbers. But when you expand them, what you can often find is that one instance will have basically European language translations. The other one will have Asian or Japanese language translations. They'll both have the English track as well. Um, and I, I I don't know why they do this. I think it, it, it particularly for 4K Blu-rays, they're like sold around the world and it probably has something to do with when you put that disc into a player in certain regions, it will default or, or automatically kind of lock in to a different a different playlist, which would then offer you different language options in the menus of your Blu-ray player. I think suffice to say that in this case, generally speaking, in my experience again, there's really no difference if you're looking for the English version of the movie, whether you grab the first one or the second one. I usually just tend to grab the first one because that's the one I think that would generally play if you did put that disc into a, you know, U.S. essentially or, or North American uh, region player. But I, I think ultimately you're safe either way. You're grabbing the movie, likely grabbing those English audio tracks and the subtitles. Feel free to safely ignore the other one. Which takes us to the last one, which is really the biggest pain of all of them is when a studio or a master a, a disc master decided to use what they call playlist obfuscation and this isn't really as common anymore or, or uh, I don't think I've really noticed it at all quite honestly when it comes to 4k discs more common back in HD blu-rays and even older ones at that so you open the movie in make MKB and you see like 50 playlists they're all the same length they're all the same movie and what they've done is they've broken the movie into little video segments, dozens of them potentially, and then they mix and match those movie segments into different playlists specifically to, to challenge folks that might be ripping physical media. The only way to know which one of those playlists is actually the right one is to physically have inspected all of them, watch the movie, and make sure that the movie plays in the right sequence. And so I don't do that. But the reality is there's a lot of there's some decent crowdsourced information out there, particularly in the make MKV forums. So if you open a disc that has a situation like this, or even in the case of like close encounters of the third time, close encounters of the third kind actually has three different cuts and different angles, and the numbers don't specifically tell you because it's not an 800 style type of playlist numbering. Whenever in doubt, Go to the Make MKV forums or do a Google search, you know, looking for uh, MKV movie title playlist or correct playlist and, and, and do that search. Do that search through the Make MKV forums. 
generally speaking, right, many people are ripping all these different discs and folks have probably talked about it in a thread. They figured out the right one and you can just essentially follow that guidance and hopefully go on good faith that they're right and you get the right one on your server. I'm sure there's some folks out there that have basically movies they ripped and kind of dormantly have had taken the wrong playlist and so the content of the film that they might experience could could be wrong in some way maybe they don't even notice maybe watching the movie later on down the road things are things happen out of order right and, and a wrong selection was made so this is one of those things that definitely makes ripping movies a, a, a pain an additional pain in addition to making sure you get the right subtitles and and, and some of the other some of the other pain points of this process but it, if you want to do it set up your physical media locally ripped locally served content you're going to face these playlist challenges and you'll have to make decisions and work your way through them so yeah i think that covers the bulk of the, the scenarios that i'm aware of in terms of what i've seen and encountered over the years on mastered discs if you have any questions please ask in the comments if you have any more suggestions for folks for how to find the right playlist is there a, is there a case or a scenario that i overlooked that you have a solution for post it in the comments if you have a tool or a way to analyze a disc and and figure out which is the right playlist based on like what a player would select that actually has a licensed blu-ray playback engine post that in the comments below i am aware that there are some tools out there that in the past may have worked for that or or may work for that i, I i'm not aware of anyone that that specifically current accurate and fully reliable so i don't rely uh, on a tool to help me tell or help me make a playlist selection but again if you know of one please post it in the comments describe it and share it for everybody otherwise please do all the regular youtube stuff like subscribe hit the bell for notifications look down in the description for ways to support the channel there's merchandise there's super thanks there's memberships there's amazon affiliate links and more i greatly greatly appreciate anything that you might do to uh to help out here and Coming back for more home theater discussion and fun.